Okay, video two on uh, oscillators. Um, let's try and focus on spring oscillators. I'm going to drop a lot of uh, equations on you, a lot of derivations, but the reality is I just want you to know how and why uh, we have the equation for a spring oscillator's position over time. So that is our goal here. We're trying to get an equation to show the spring oscillator's, po oscillator's position over time. So I, I just got a diagram right here of a spring oscillator for you. Um, but let's go ahead and have a look how we're going to use it. We're going to use uh, Hooke's law, where we say the force acting on the spring is equal to the spring, uh, the minus of the spring constant times the displacement. And I'm going to break this up by saying force equals mass times acceleration. Uh, and acceleration, therefore, equals negative this k over m times x, the spring constant divided by the mass over x. Here's the problem, and this is a kind of higher level mathematical problem of which you're never going to be expected to be able to derive this yourself. Uh, we have what's called a differential equation, and this is only going to make sense to make calculus people really. So let's just go, oh, wrong one, let's go full uh, screen. For those people doing calculus, if you're not doing calculus, don't worry. I just want you to know that velocity equals a change in position over change in time, so that equals dx over dt. Acceleration. Is a change in velocity over change in time. If we take the derivative of velocity, uh, yeah, dv dt, uh, then we have acceleration, which means that acceleration is actually the second derivative of position. Um, I'm hoping you've done enough acceleration velocity stuff with Miss Hannon to kind of vaguely make sense of that. Not a calculus based class, so if not, don't worry, but I just want you to know that. Let me just pause here. Okay, so that's my differential equation, where I have the second derivative of position over time um, equals negative k over mx. But the problem is, I have the second derivative of x here, and I have x there, which is what makes it differential equation. I am not the best at differential equations, but I like this one because basically the way you solve it is, you guess an answer, you test it to see if it works, and if it works, you're golden, you use the answer. So um, we can actually solve it if we guess an answer and we define omega, we're just defining this thing omega to be this uh, k over m, but square rooted. I'm hoping you're going to see why we did this in a second. Um, let's see how we go. Let me just pause it. Okay, so here's what we have. Um, we have a differential equation. Uh, I told you that we are going to define omega as uh, the square root of k over m. The good thing about differential equations is you guess an answer, you test it out. If it's right, it's good. So uh, we're going to guess, if you like, the answer um, where x equals the, 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 um, the equation to describe the position of the oscillator over time is going to be x equals a, which is the amplitude, cosine uh, of omega t plus phi. Uh, does that work? Let's try it on the board to see if it works, and then we can see if we, we can keep it. Okay, this is only for the calculus people. If you're not calculus, don't worry, but I figured we might as well play with calculus if uh, some of you can follow along. So let me pause it. All right, um, we're going to do a bit of calculus here. Those people that can't do calculus, don't uh, worry too much about it. Um, Here's what we're going to end up. We, we have the second derivative of position has to equal negative k over m uh, times x. So we're going to assume that x, we're trying to solve this for x, we're, we're going to assume x equals cosine omega t plus phi. And I'll, I'll talk to you what phi is in a minute. Um, so let's go dx over dt. Well, the first thing we have to do is a chain rule. We have to take the derivative of what's inside. We're taking the derivative with respect to t. So that's going to go away. It's just going to be omega, and that's a constant, uh, so that goes away. And then the derivative of cosine of what's inside here is always negative sine. So the derivative is going to be negative omega sine omega t plus b. Okay, and now we're going to take the, uh, this is dx dt, this is the same as velocity. Um, so let's calculate the acceleration, which is d uh, squared x over dt squared. And I'm going to do the same thing again, do the chain rule. So this is now going to become negative omega squared because the derivative of omega t is omega uh, plus b. And then that goes back from sine to cosine. 
and then omega t plus b. All right, has it worked? Well, this is what we have right here, but here's the thing, x is cosine omega t plus uh, that. So all of this is the same as saying, oh, that didn't work. All of this is the same as saying negative omega x, and considering, can you see down here, d2x over dt squared equals, considering omega is the square root of k over m, I square that, I have k over m times x, which is the thing I wanted to get, which proves that that is the correct answer. So that is the function uh, to describe the position of an oscillator um, with regards to time, as proved by calculus. If you do not follow that, then that's okay. Just believe me that I'm not making this stuff up and it is mathematically legit. Okay, let me pause it. Okay, that was fun. Let's go back to the previous uh, slide and talk about some stuff. Let me take you off uh, or take me off the camera. So this is the equation we have. Does it make sense? Uh, well, first thing you're gonna notice is I've just squeezed an amplitude in there. This makes sense because if I took that amplitude away, the highest value that x could be would be 1, right? Because cosine of um, 0 is 1, cosine of pi is negative 1. Um, so all I'm doing is I'm getting that uh, potential maximum value of 1 and I'm multiplying it by the amplitude. So if the amplitude was 5 meters, which is a huge amplitude, but regardless, uh, the maximum amplitude would be 5 and then I times it by the cosine of of the angle and i would end up with a maximum of five minimum of negative five that makes sense omega this is the square root of the spring constant over the mass we threw that in there to make the math easier and boy did it make it easier so that obviously has something to play with it t is just time and and phi is phase change constant it's a constant it doesn't really matter all it would do is when we look at this nice cosine curve if we threw in for example a phase change constant of um pi then instead of starting here and going down it would start at where pi is which is actually um the t over two here and would go down like that but that's nothing to worry about the other thing is this equation is not actually on your ap equation sheet they have a simpler version which i'm going to talk to you about in a minute so if you write this down that's fine but don't worry too much about it right now let me pause it the equations we do need to know so uh, i've got the nice picture of a cosine curve um and the equation we have there we want to just try and simplify it to the form they have in the ap equation sheet um, bearing in mind, in a cosine curve, it takes uh, the the period it takes to go from one point to another and back again. The time it takes to do that is the period, which is t. And theoretically, uh, according to a cosine curve, that t is uh, two pi, right? Because uh, this is zero, this is pi, this is two pi, uh, and so on. Um, so what I can do is I can say that this part of the equation, forget, forget this guy, no one cares about him, let's forget about this guy. But this part of the equation, the omega t, um, has to equal 2 pi dur during uh, one period. Well, considering that uh, the period capital T is the inverse of frequency, I can say omega over frequency equals 2 pi. And then I can just say omega equals two pi times the frequency how, how many waves per second there are and then if i uh yeah just remembering that omega is the square root of k over n that comes in helpful so um then if i plug all that into the original expression up here then we have the amplitude cosine instead of omega i have two pi f and then i have t this is the equation that they have on the AP equation sheet. It, 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 it's really, there's not too much you can do with it other than it tells you the position of an oscillator as a function of time. Um, and it makes sense that it's a cosine function, right? Because sine, cosine, these are the only functions that are harmonic, that recur over time and keep on going back and forth to the same uh, place. So let me pause it there. In fact, I'm going to upload it, but I'm going to do one more video. I just like to upload videos under 10 minutes, otherwise it takes an hour to do it. Um, so that's the equation on the uh, equation sheet. I intend to do one more video. If you don't see the other video, then clearly you don't have to watch it. Okay. Adios.